how will they remember me? As you might imagine, that's a question that's been on my heart of late. And knowing that I would soon be moving on to a new position of senior minister at Unity of Traverse City, Michigan, I've been contemplating the last seven years that I have been here with you, first as a member of this congregation, and then moving into and onto the staff to be in service to you and this incredible, incredible ministry. And more than once, that very question has run through my mind. How will they, how will you remember me? And you know, it's a question that is impossible for me to answer. Only you can do that. But a few weeks ago, I came across something in my office that offered me at least some possible answers to that question of how you might remember me. I found the contents of this bag. Now, who's been out there panicking, thinking I'd brought a lunch and was going to talk for a very long time? <laughs> no lunch. Contents of this bag are all of the various name badges that I have worn during my time here with you. And so for some of you out there, perhaps you'll remember me as, well, as a congregant, you know, name tag Sunday, or, or maybe a, um, let's see, a volunteer. Perhaps you'll remember me as the assistant worship coordinator. I don't even know what that is anymore. But anyway, I was it once. <laughs> um, or even as your very first ministerial intern under the new program at Unity Institute. Okay, not too many takers, let's see. Um, <laughs> maybe there's someone or a group in the room that will remember me as the adult education assistant, or, or maybe the, the director of sacred service. Um, let's see, the director of pastoral care. And oh dear God, please, someone in the room, please remember me as the associate minister of congregational care and ministry programs. <laughs> But you know, it's, uh, it's really not about titles, or name badges, and, and job responsibilities. It's really about what our song had to offer. It's about legacy. It's about how we, how we show up, how we express ourselves. It's about the gifts we offer that make a difference in someone's life. And this idea of legacy, it really took on life in me in August of last year. On August 13th of last year, I was sitting in my car in a parking lot, and I was looking at a text message that I had just received from my daughter-in-law, Melissa. It was a picture of my son, Chris, and he was holding their newborn baby girl for the very first time. I looked at Chris, I looked at my new granddaughter, Macy, in his arms, and my life changed. And so did my feelings about my life. In that moment, my life took on a real sense of urgency. And it wasn't an urgency that was chaotic or stressful in any way. The urgency that I felt was this overwhelming desire to live my life in a way that would best serve Macy as she grew up. I sat in my car and I began to, to wonder, if I'm not here tomorrow, how will she, how will Macy remember me? What would she learn about me from her daddy and his older brother, from the people in my life who have known me the best? And would I be content with what they might have to say? And from that point on, I have tried to be as aware as I can possibly be about how it is I'm living my life and the decisions that I'm making along the way. Because legacies are remembered after we're gone, but we create them as we live. And this morning, I'd like to ask that we, we step back and we take a broader perspective of this idea of legacy, to see it more than what we typically associate with someone after they have died. 
because there are many opportunities for closing, closure and endings in our lives as we continue to live. We could end a relationship and that doesn't have to be negative. Oftentimes, people come into our lives at particular times for very specific reasons, and they bless us with wonderfully positive experiences. We can move from a city that has been our home for many years, or move out of a home that's been in our family for decades. We can move from one career and step into a brand new line of work. We can leave the workforce in its entirety and move into our time of retirement. Each of these examples and any number of others that you, you have in your own minds right now, they serve as opportunities, as opportunities for us to stop and look back and see how it is and what it is we have added to our ongoing legacies. And when I take time to look back at a particular aspect of my life or a time period in my life, I like to use the idea or the vision of a tapestry. Because I believe that, or I'd like to believe that, as every one of us on this planet are moving through our life experiences all at the same time, we are creating what I like to call a beautiful tapestry of life. And part of its beauty is that at any moment, we can stop and we can call our vision of that tapestry into our own mind. And we get to choose its size, its shape, the designs that, it, that are in it, the colors that it holds where a particular experience in our life starts and stops, and where it is that our individual threads come together and intertwine with those who have made an impact in our lives. And so I started to, to do that visualization around my time here with you. I started to look at our piece of that overall tapestry of life. I started to look for my legacy I started to look for ways in which you might remember me. And after about 30 seconds, I knew a great depth that I was not seeing anything that was my legacy, nothing that was for me, for you to remember about me. Because the tapestry that had come into my mind and the lesson that I was guided to prepare for you today, they're not about me, they're about you. They're about your legacies and the gifts that you have offered to me. If you were here back in early December when I shared that I would soon be moving on to Traverse City, Michigan, you might remember or recall something that Reverend Patricia said after my announcement was complete. Well, actually, she, she said two things. The first thing she said was that she felt very comfortable to speak not only on behalf of herself, but also on behalf of everyone that was in the room that day in saying that y'all would try really hard to find it deep within your hearts to be genuinely happy for me. <laughs> the second thing she said was that you had grown me. You had grown me. And although I will admit that I have been very disappointed that absolutely none of that growth has been of the physically vertical variety. <laughs> I do know that there was a lot of truth in what Patricia had to say. And that's what today and our tapestry of life is all about. And so, what do I see when I look at our tapestry in my mind? Well, there are three things that really jump out at me. The first thing I see is a circular design with nothing in the middle. The arcs of this circle are very smooth and soft and gentle, and its colors are very warm and inviting. And for me, this symbolizes you. It represents you and the sacred container that you prepared for me. Eight years ago, when I walked into this church for the very first time as an out-of-town visitor, I was made to feel welcome, and I was made to feel as if I was somebody special. A year later, when I moved to this area to enter the seminary, 
I knew that this was going to be my church home of choice. Now that might not mean a whole lot to you, but I beg to differ. Because what you didn't know about me back then was that I was trying to raise what had become a very low level of self-esteem. I was trying to strengthen my own sense of self-worth. For the two or three years before I moved here, they were two or three years that were the most difficult years of my life. And then when I moved here, I stepped completely away from everything that had become my comfort zone, a city that I had lived in for 23 years, a 28-year career in the very same industry. I moved away from a home that I loved, friends that I cherished, and most importantly, I moved away from my sons. But you, you and this sacred container that you've created called Unity Church of Overland Park, you helped me feel accepted and you helped me feel safe. And as I entered into a lot of unknown territory, you became the hub of my support system. And you helped move me into and through a very important time of transition and preparation in my life. All of that because one person said, welcome, good morning, it is so good to see you today. Imagine the number of times you have the opportunity to say those words or something like them to somebody that walks through those doors. Somebody who probably will not have the opportunity seven years later to stand up here and tell you their story and how it impacted their life and how their life continued to unfold as a result. Please remember, please don't ever forget that those people continue to come through those doors and their stories want to unfold. The second thing that I notice about our tapestry is that it has a wide variety of colors in it. Some of those colors are bold and vivid and bright and others are more muted and even dark. And for me, the contrast is representative of, of the times of great personal joy and great personal challenge that I've experienced during the time that I've been here. But when I step back and I look at the overall tapestry and the contrast that exists, what I see coming forth is a strengthening of a teaching, actually a promise, a promise that's been very important to me for a very long time. It's the scriptural promise that I am never alone, that God is always with me. Now again, you might be wondering, what does this have to do with you? Well, it has everything to do with you. I think it's pretty easy for most of us to be with someone when they are in a place of great joy, a place of celebration and happiness. And we like to be in that energy it becomes a part of our energy. It lifts our spirits beyond even where they may have been already. And I have been so thrilled to be able to share so many moments of, of personal joy that have transpired in my life while here with you. And I have a brand new one to share with you this morning. Last week, I took some time away. I went down to Houston, Texas to, to spend a week with my sons and, and their wives, my two granddaughters, before I move on to, to Michigan. And on the first night that I arrived, my son Nick and his wife Natalie were able to confirm for me that my third grandchild is on its way. <laughs> you know, I'm feeling guilty. I have to say something about Macy. She got her first tooth when I was there too. So, you know, it was a great week. It was a great week. But just as the contrasts exist in the colors. It's not always as easy for us to be with someone in times of challenge. To be with someone who cannot believe or embrace the spiritual truths that you know to be true, those truths that you are never alone, that God is always with you. And perhaps the darkest night of my soul that I experienced while here is one that I've not shared publicly 
and in any detail only with Reverend Patricia and Reverend Bob. You see, very early on, I questioned whether I was to remain a minister and be in ministry. I struggled to find my own identity as a minister. I questioned every decision I had ever made that led to my becoming a minister. There were times when I could not see, I could not feel, I could not find God. I thought I knew that this was what I was supposed to be and that it had been a calling placed in my heart by God. But then there were mornings I would wake up and I barely knew my own name. And I significantly doubted God's presence in my life. And during that time, more than once, Reverend Patricia encouraged me to take a Sunday off. She said, Eileen, just, just stay home on a Sunday. Sleep in, rest, relax. Go do something that brings you joy. Just stay home and don't worry about being a minister just for a day. And each time she offered that, even though I so appreciated her, her concern, her compassion, her generosity, I had to tell her that I couldn't do that. And when she asked me why not, I simply told her I needed to be here. I needed to be with you. I needed to be in your energy. And although I knew that if I did come here on a Sunday, I needed to be here as one of your ministers, it was actually the easiest day of the week. Because when I couldn't see God, one of you would approach me and be a reflection of its presence. When I couldn't feel God in my life, one of you came up and gave me a hug. When I could not find God, I would walk through those doors, I would come up these stairs, and I would turn around and look out, and I would find that God had placed itself all around me under very bright lights. How could I not see God? If you ever find yourself in a place of doubting God's presence in your life and you want to take just one step, one step to begin releasing some of that doubt, come here. Come here. Because there is no place and there is no one on this campus where God is not. The third thing that I see when I envision our tapestry of life are the many places where our individual threads come together and intertwine with one another. For me, these represent the, the times, the places, the experiences where, as Reverend Patricia said, you have grown, me. But there's a thread that's missing. And it's a thread I want to add this morning. It's a very special thread. And it's one that will touch every aspect of our design. The thread is white. First, so that it can be clearly seen. And also, to, to represent the purity of intention with which I weave it into place. This very special thread. It's my thread of gratitude. I thank you for the ways in which you have always been so authentic, so real with me. The ways in which you shared your, your thoughts, your feelings, your concerns, your hopes, your dreams, always from your hearts. And I thank you for inviting me into some of the most holy and sacred moments of your lives to join you together in marriage or holy union, 
to hold and christen your babies, to sit at the bedsides of your loved ones as they moved into their time of transition and then come together with you to celebrate their lives. I thank you for helping me to broaden my perspective, to open to new ways of seeing and being, all the while still deepening my own convictions and the wonderful possibilities that this life has to offer. I thank you for teaching me that being vulnerable and crying in front of people and reaching out for help in times of challenge are not signs of personal weakness, but rather demonstrations of great strength and authenticity. And I thank you for inspiring me to always want to raise my personal bar one notch higher while living my life one notch deeper. Someone that may be here for their first time today or others who will listen or view this lesson online. They may be asking, how did they do that? How did they do all of that for her? You did it through your legacies. You did it through the ways that I mentioned at the very beginning of this lesson. You did it in the way that you showed up, in the ways that you expressed yourself to me. You did it with the gifts you offered that have made such a difference in my life. <laughs> Almost four years ago, nearly to the day, it was February 15th, 2009. I offered my first lesson here for you. And as I began to write the closing comments for this, my last lesson here for you, it felt right to go back to the beginning. Four years ago, my first lesson was a lesson about gratitude. And we spent time that day looking at the, the life and the practices of a spiritual master of gratitude by the name of Brother David Steindlrost. And as I closed my lesson that day, I offered you these words. I was speaking of Brother David. And I said, his wish is that we open our hearts each day and be grateful for the blessings that life has to offer and that we let these blessings flow through us then, he says, everyone you meet on this day will be blessed by you, just by your eyes, your smile, by your touch, just by your presence. He calls this a really good day. How have you shown up for me? How have you expressed yourselves to me? How have you offered your gifts that have made a difference in my life? Many times. So many, many times. It was just by your eyes, your smiles, your touch, just by your presence. your gifts, your living legacies. They go with me because I carry them in my heart. And I will do all I can to always pay them forward. My friends, dear, dear friends, The last seven years, they've been a really good day. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. God bless you.